So when you go to work on a, on a site like this, this site here, uh, your company will ask our company to do a, an irrigation design. For us to do an irrigation design, we require a drawing of preferably of this quality. We can work down from that, and we often do, and a flow test. So I don't know if they sent me, is any of you working on this site? Are you all working yeah, on this site? Yeah, we just finished the irrigation. So do you know what the, so the irrigation's in? Yeah. Do you know what the flow t was on it? I can't remember yeah. through, It might be in my phone, anyway. So traditionally, a flow test will be someone going out, putting a bucket down, opening up a tap, shoving a bucket under it, and timing until the bucket's full. That's fine, and we can work with that, but it doesn't give us any pressure. Residentially flows usually enough, so if you said, oh, look, the bucket took 10 seconds to fill up, we're like, okay, that's 60 litres a minute, that's really good. Um, most residential properties are going to have enough pressure, so pressure and flow are different, uh, to pop the sprinklers up, but if... It didn't. We've had situations, especially down south, so Hallett, Hallett Cove, Morfitt Vale, sorry, Morfitt Vale, and that Onkaparinga area is really low pressure to the point where some of their parks they can't pop sprinklers up. There's there's enough water for the if the sprinklers were able to pop up, like the 60 liters a minute at 150 kPa, which just means drip tube and that's it. You can't so they have to subsurface a reserve if that's the or they put a tank in. 60 litres a minute falls into that tank and 60 litres a minute gets pumped out of that tank but the 60 litres a minute that's going out of the tank is going out at 400 kPa and it's coming in at 150 so the pump's just there to get it up to the point where it can be used. This is a, a, a pressure versus flow test gauge that we've made. So it looks like it's been turned around. Um, so you'd put that on the tap and if you close this bull valve, this whole thing's under static pressure. So static pressure is the pressure that your system's at when it's off. So you'll get a reading for static. So you might have uh, 800 kPa static. Then you open this ball valve that way and water will flow out this pipe. Now, before we had these digital flow meters, we would just run the pipe into a bucket, get that pressure to a pressure that we wanted to. So this is the number that we're trying to get first. So you say get move this ball valve until this gauge says 200 kPa or 300 kPa or 400 kPa. Once that's happening, measure how much flow is coming out in litres a minute. So the number we'll be looking for is, you know, uh, we were getting 32 litres a minute at 200 kPa and then we were able to get 28 litres a minute at 400 kPa. That can give us this curve and we'll know how the water's acting when the pressures change and then that'll enable us to do a design like this. One pressure versus flow test is usually enough. If you had us a 400 kPa, we could work with that because drip tube and sprinklers both operate under that. So, you know, your um, MP rotators are pretty happy at kind of 240 to 3 something, I think. 200 to 350, 280 being kind of an optimum pressure and drip tube's lower than that. So drip tube wants to probably play in that 180 to 240 bracket. Uh, so you can't quite run MP rotators and drip tube off the same pressure reducer, uh, but you, you could probably get close. You'd, if you had a pressure that was at the low end of the MP rotator and at the high end of the drip tube, um, you could almost run them together. We've had situations in the past where uh, people have said, you know, I've only got one line of poly underneath my driveway, it's spec home, cheap. I just want to put a tap timer on and have four MP rotators running my lawn and drip tube in my garden. Can I put them on the same valve? Theoretically, yes, you can. It's not ideal because you can't then water your lawn once a week and your garden three times a week, but they'll deliver the same millimetres of water per hour. So if you're happy to give your garden and your lawn 20 mil a week, and you can just turn it on and do that for two hours, then you're gonna be fine. Um, obviously it's not ideal, but most of the situations we're dealing with in a, in, a, in a normal world aren't ideal, which is what I'm guessing you guys will, like this plan's ideal. And then you have to go install it, and there's rock or trees or clients. So obviously you adapt as, as you need to. Does not matter what time of day you do the pressure it, test? It can. Um, if you could get multiple flows uh, or pressure tests for us, that would be good. You want to be testing it when it's going to be used if you can. So if it's 5 a.m. that you're going to water from 5 to 7 a.m., great, do a f test at 5 a.m. It's not always realistic that you're going to be able to do that. It's also unlikely that it's going to drop that much. So especially in established areas or... I guess regional areas where there's um, large gaps between households, like one shower in five ac acres versus a new subdivision. Where so if you were, if we were doing something at Mount Barker and they had stage one and they hadn't released 
the other 22 stages, we might factor down slightly because we know that at 7.30 on Monday morning or 7 o'clock Monday morning, that whole suburb is going to be showering in two years. So we have to allow for that. But generally the water will just keep getting increased by whoever's selling you the water, or as in like whoever's selling the community the water, so SA Water or if it's a recycled water mainline, they'll keep giving you the pressure they need as the suburb changes. So not, it's not dramatic. Um, I guess use your own, um, I guess, judgment when you're in situations and go, shit, this is, this is weird. Like there's a, a chicken factory next to us where they wash chickens <laughs> <laughs> when they kill them, just to be clear. <laughs> it's, a real, it's a free range chicken farm. Yeah. They wash them every day because they want them to have a good life. So there's lots of water being used at the two chicken washing periods they have a day. So you'd either make sure that you're testing when they're not using water and when they are, so we could work out the difference, or you, you'd then schedule your programming so that it's not watering when the chickens are being washed. <laughs> There's an Instagram clip. So you give us the flow, um, and then we take it back here, and we get the plan, and we design it. You will probably end up getting one of these, I reckon. I'd say Hoops will probably buy one. Yeah, there you go. We've got them. How, how much that? Uh, how much? Two hours, five guys. I know, 400 bucks. Yeah. No, they <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, I'll find out. I'll just get the, I'll get the guys to see if we've got, if they haven't got one, I'll get them to make one up. Have you got any pressure versus flow gauges ready to sell? Yeah, already had some built. All right. Can you get me a price for uh, landscape techniques? And availability. So uh, the design will come back here. Um, and then he, at this level, it's probably going to be Brandon or Jared or Chris will sit down and do a hand design. And so that's, I guess, answering the question that you would have asked maths teachers in school, like, why the fuck do I need to know how to use a compass and a protractor? Um, yeah, basically, I, it was, I was blown away when I first started. I'm like, no shit, this is stuff that we actually were meant to learn at school. So what will happen is the guys will sit down and they'll start plotting out rough distances that they think. So um, I guess there's a science behind why we put heads where we put them, but there's a bit of art about how we get them to their final place. Now, if you give this piece of paper to three irrigation designers in three different states, you'll get three different designs. None of them are necessarily right or wrong, they're just different. So uh, you've got a real skinny area here which people could either put side strips in. Are you familiar with side strips? Yeah. So they throw, you know what I'm talking about? So they're, they're a sprinkler that throws further left and right than they do forward. Oh, yeah. So they'll throw a metre and a half forward and they'll throw four and a half metres right and four and a half metres left. Or you can get one that sits on the left and it throws only four and a half metres that way and one and 1.8 that way or 1.5. And then you still head to head them, but it means rather than putting... So if that's a two metre gap there, which it probably is. No scale. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is more just if yeah, like if, if this was Brad or someone, then I can be like, why is there no scale on the plan? Like, how are you guys, how are your guys supposed to build this? I'm just me winding him up. <laughs> yeah, right. So if, you, if it is one and a half, then you've got to put a sprinkler every one and a half metres on both sides. Right, and it's just stupid. You have eight to ten sprinklers just there. So whereas we can put a side strip there and have like one there and then another four and a half metres, you have another one, another four and a half metres, you have another one, and do the same on that side. And then you can open this up to, you know, your four metre sprays, three metre sprays, open these up to your six and eight metre sprays. And because MP rotators are a matched precipitation head, they can all pop up at the same time and all work at the same time and you'll still get, you'll get delivered. Uh, this is Matt Irving. He's uh, one of our guest speakers. You guys may have seen him on YouTube, the Ask Ervo segment. <laughs> Not familiar? Thanks, man. How much is it? Uh, we're getting the price now. So here's one we prepared earlier. I'm not sure what that's for. Is that, to, is that the inlet? An inlet pipe? That's an inlet pipe. All right, sick. Basically, that male thread will go into your oh, So this is an adaptable, no. like you could put it onto different shit. Oh, is that your tap end? So you can, it comes with okay. options you want to do. So you could thread tape this onto a garden tap? Yep. You can screw that as it is straight on. That there, or, and push down with this. And then don't okay, so our kit board. our kit just has enough things for people to like yeah. adapt to either a 25mm ball valve or... Yep. At least use the hose, get it up out of the ground, and then yeah, use that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. This looks much more robust than the one we've got. Look at that high quality brass fittings, pink thread tape. So the, the reason we've got yellow hose here and gray hose there is this yellow hose is mains pressure rated. So you can have this on a garden tap and have that ball valve closed to read your static pressure and this isn't gonna blow apart. Gray hose is, is unlikely to blow apart either. It's pretty strong. But when we're selling a product like this, it needs to obviously meet that standard. So you might have that on your hose and then join all that together or have that on your tap and then have someone turn the tap on and then you can reset this flow meter as it's going. So if the water's flying through there and the numbers are climbing, you can keep adjusting this until you get your static, or sorry, your, your I guess, what's, it, what's it, static and active? Dynamic. So you get your dynamic pressure, which is the pressure that's there while water's going past it by adjusting this until you get the 200 kPa or whatever, and then press reset and then it will start counting. So you want to get to 100? Two, three, four, like, uh, look, if I, I'd like, I'll say 400. Yeah. Um, there's going to be suburbs you can't get it, and you'll have to come back to us and go, we measured the static, it's 400. The best dynamic pressure, like if you go to Morfitt, where was it, Morfitt Vale, where we were at that park, it was fucked. Like we had, we couldn't get, stat static was 250. I couldn't get water to flow out of here. Oh, sorry, I couldn't, I, ha I almost had to close this off to put enough back pressure on the water to get this gauge to move and then there was like two liters falling out. So you're gonna get like two liters a minute at 200 kPa, but we need to get 30 or 40 liters a minute. And by the time we opened it up to get 30 or 40, this was at 80 and 100 or 150. And a sprinkler won't pop up at, at 150. <coughs> the data that they give you, uh, like 280 kPa on a sprinkler is so that it throws the distance that the charts say it throws. But below that, you're not even gonna get enough pressure to, to beat that spring. And if you've got eight or 10 of them, they're all just gonna have water falling out and you're gonna know what's going on. And then you'll split the system in half because you'll be like, nah, maybe we've just put too many on and then it still doesn't work and then it still doesn't work and even one sprinkler won't pop up. So that's the great thing about all the products that we choose to sell, especially, I guess, a professional irrigation shop. And we're not the only one, obviously, but if you go to a, a Bunnings or a Stratco or a Mitre 10, the sprinklers they sell are effectively two pieces of plastic with a slot cut in them and water comes out of it. Whereas a, a product like an MP Rotator or a, a Rainbird R-Van have um, wind tunnel data and uh, test, so they'll put catch cans in a wind tunnel and then test the millimeters of equivalent rainfall that these sprinklers will create in different scenarios. Mm -hmm.